y'all, I'm Elisa and I am the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I'd like to share an organization tip with you and we are going to talk about stencils. Now my stencil collection has grown a lot in the past year because I really enjoyed using them in my art journaling projects and I've even started using them in Bible journaling and memory keeping and I have had several issues with storing stencils. They get damaged, I can't see them, I don't use them. So there's a lot of things that come up when you are storing your stencils. I'd like to talk through a few of those with you and show you some options for how you might choose to store them. Let's go. One popular way for storing stencils and keeping them safe is to use a binder. Just a simple three ring binder. I have some page protectors in here. These are eight and a half by 11. So they work for smaller stencils to medium sized stencils. And you just slip your stencil in. It keeps it protected, allows you to flip through and see what you have in your stash. This method can work really great if you are willing to flip through. Let me show you something else that might help. Instead of just keeping them here in the page dividers, consider also putting a colored cardstock, black cardstock, whatever you like behind it so that you can more easily see the stencil. It also gives you extra space because now I can store stencils on both sides and still very clearly see what I have. You can use the colors to kind of color code what kind of stencil it is. So maybe all of your florals are one color. Maybe all of your abstract stencils are another color. That way you can easily flip to what you are looking for to get through your stencils. You of course can put a couple of different ones. See, these are kind of related with the shapes. I can put them right there and be able to flip through and see what I have pretty easily. And it's, it's a great way to keep them stored. And like I said before, to keep them safe. So just putting in the paper and dropping in your stencil. Something else you could do with the paper in the back is label what each stencil is, label what the maker is, if you need that kind of information or if you might be looking for that information. And like I said, the color coding always helps keep you a little bit better organized and be able to find what you're looking for. The more organized you are, I have found the easier it is to clean up. Now, some of the drawbacks to using the binder. You do have to pull it out and flip through it to use it. For me, if things are out of sight, they are out of mind. So pulling a binder off a shelf sometimes is, I know it sounds silly, but a little cumbersome in my art process and the flow of creating. So I wouldn't necessarily pull it all the time. Also, if you are not great at cleaning off your stencils and making sure they're dry before you put them away, of course, putting away a wet stencil in a plastic divider is not going to end well. They'll start to smell. They could get messed up. Putting them in wet or with paint sole on them could get them stuck to the divider. So those are things to think about. Just considering how you you like to use your stencils. The next option I wanted to share would be the file folder option. And this one I used for a long time and simply just using file folders hanging in a drawer next to my desk, you can sort your stencils by size, by type, and they hang here nicely and it keeps them pretty safe in here. And what I mean by safe is it keeps them from getting bent. But here is what I did find. When I had more than one stencil in a folder, they tended to get caught up on each other and I had to pick out the whole folder in order to get to my stencils. Now, if you only have a handful of stencils, this might be a really good option for you. For me, as my collection grew, this just kind of stopped working. So let me show you another option. This next option might seem pretty obvious, especially if you have a lot of Tim Holtz stencils, but you can keep them on a simple binder ring, a ring clip like one of these. The Tim Holtz stencils are great because they already have the hole punched in the top. They are all sized the same, so they hang very nicely. You can see I have a couple of different size stencils on here, the smaller ones and the larger ones. This makes it really easy to just grab all your stencils. If you like to travel with your stencils, this is a great way to do it. Also, you can just easily hang it by your desk and you can kind of see what your choices are. You can also use the same ring clip for other stencils that are missized. What I like to do is try to aim for a corner so that I can have them hang relatively close together so that they're not 
crazy wonky and they can hang nicely like this. Now, some drawbacks. You cannot really see all the stencils you have. If you can tell, they're all layered on top of each other. So you do have to be able to sort through them to just glance over and see. Also, not all stencils easily go through these rings and I have damaged some by just having them um, kind of press out too much, if that makes sense. So like for instance, right here, this stencil I've hung over here for a while and now it's kind of messed up this little corner. So I always have to make sure it is nice and flat and secure um, when I'm ready to use the stencil. Sometimes the stencils can get caught up on each other when they're hanging on the ring. So that's something else to look at. But for me, this was a great solution for a long time. Let me show you where I used to store them. So I used to store my stencils in a drawer right next to my desk. And I liked this for a couple reasons. It was really easy to just turn and grab them. I did have them on the rings. So I was able to pull it out, flip through it and find a stencil I like. And they laid flat. This didn't take up that much space. And when space is a premium, it's kind of hard to take up a lot of space with stencils. I was able to combine bind them and kind of push some back here and you can get so many stencils in one drawer. A couple of drawbacks. Again, you have to pull out the stencils so that you can see what they are, which can be a problem. And I found myself not reaching for them as often. And here's the other thing. They also got tangled on each other, which became an issue. I also started buying larger stencils. So these drawers did not fit the larger 12 by 12 stencils that I was picking up at different places and using in my journaling. So the stencils were getting bent and damaged and I had to come up with a better solution. Let me show you what I finally settled on. So this is how I now store my stencils. I have these two bars from Ikea meant to be kind of towel rack bars and um, metal hooks that I'm able to hang rings off of. So my smaller stencils are grouped together in groups by manufacturer or by size and hung on the metal clips and then on the metal hooks right there. And then my larger stencils are able to hang free one per stencil or one stencil per hook on the bottom. Here is why I really like doing it like this. I can see my stencils all the time in my workspace and I'm able to just glance up and kind of get an idea of what stencils I have. And it reminds me to reach for the stencils, which is really important when you are kind of arranging your art supplies, make sure they inspire you and that they're not so put away that you don't reach for them. I also think this is the best way to keep them from being damaged because they can swing freely. I'm not cramming them into a drawer and it just allows me to sort through pretty easily. This can expand out. Of course, it has a lot more room for a lot of hooks, so I'm not really worried about filling it up too much right away. And the other thing is I'm not always the best at cleaning my stencils or letting them dry all the way before I put them away. And this still keeps them safe because they're not pressed into something. They don't get stuck on each other because there's air around them to just allow them to dry. So this is my favorite solution that I've had so far. This is one I'm going to stick with for a while. And I highly recommend looking for a similar bar, a towel rack, something like that where you can hang your stencils. So that's just a quick look at some stencil storage options. I did have some subscribers reach out and ask what I did with my stencils. So I thought I would share. If you have any other stencil storage ideas, I would love to hear them below. Make sure you leave a comment. Or if you have a part of your craft room that you're kind of stumped and you don't know what to do with, let me know. I would love to kind of cover what I do in my craft room and maybe it will help you out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as that bell notification button. I have links below to some of the supplies that you saw here and a link to join my email newsletter list. Every couple of weeks, I send out a newsletter with organization tips, crafties, projects, and just overall scrappy fun. So join in on the newsletter. I hope you have a fantastic day and as always, keep it creative.